Hello, my friends. Stormy here. I'm here to tell you a little story of one of the greatest lies perpetrated on the planet right now. Something called fossil fuels is not a fossil, but rather something naturally created by the Earth. Now, for reasons that I guess is unclear, most people have not been able to know the truth of this matter, that the earth produces oil. It makes it from a natural cycle of the earth. It is called the lifeblood of the earth. And as we pump this out, it keeps filling itself back up. And now let's get on the story. One of the greatest fairy tales ever told and how it came to be. I suppose we should begin with academia and how it imprints this upon us. It took millions of years to form. About two billion years ago, marine organisms like algae and microscopic animals and plants died and settled on the ocean floor. Beneath other sediments in the ocean and in the absence of oxygen, these fossils changed into a substance called kerogen. Under heat and pressure, kerogen gradually changes into oil or gas. The whole process usually takes at least a million years. At the molecular level, oil and gas are hydrocarbons made up of hydrogen and carbon atoms. The constant pressure and movement of the Earth's crust squeezes oil and gas through the pores or spaces within rocks. Some oil and gas reaches the Earth's surface and seeps out naturally into land or water. Often it is trapped beneath the surface by impermeable layers or rock structures, like faults and folds. Within the crust, oil or gas deposits build up and form reservoirs. Reservoirs are like vast sponges filled with oil and gas. They can be as large as... A so now, that is the scientific explanation for how oil is created. Uh, hydrocarbons. Uh, and the part about being the hydrogen, the most abundant element in the universe, and carbon, that is all true. But to say that dying... Uh, little critters, uh, vegetation, uh, dinosaurs, and all of that has produced all this oil is sheer nonsense. And as we explore a little bit deeper, we will find out why. Now here, Wikipedia gives petroleum. Petroleum is naturally occurring. Uh, crude oil. Hydrocarbons. That is the interesting word, though. Gas. Oil. Hydrocarbons are abundant throughout the universe. And here's their little images of all of their knowledge. But if we get into other things, say the planets and so forth, let's go to planets with hydrocarbons. And here we have the great deceiver, NASA. Uh, Titan surface organic surpassed all reserves on Earth. Well, how is this great company of NASA admitting that they have organics? Did they have plants growing there? Did they have dinosaurs walking on Titan? How's all this happening? All of these great gas giants with hydrocarbons on it, and yet ours is the only planet that is producing them from the dinosaurs dropping dead? Let's go a little bit deeper here. Um, just one moment. It's a very interesting yeah, natural article. gas, because they're both interrelated and they're both produced from uh, organic means. And yet we find methane on planets.
Then you got the mystery of so much carbon in the universe. And of course fuel is mostly carbon based. And of course rocks and earth and mantle and earth's core all consist of carbon and also iron and other minerals. I don't know about you, for many years, like in the 70s, they were talking about the oil crisis that we're going to run out before, well, today. <laughs> According to these sites, the oil fields that had been dry are naturally refilling again. Of course, some skeptics say it's because cracks open up underground and leaks from other areas underground into the old uh, drill holes. Here's a site talking about the lies about the oil running out and the oil crisis and putting up prices and um, why the wars in the Middle East are occurring, which is quite an interesting read, so I'll let you have a read of that. Here's an example of oil bubbling up. So that was a very interesting point about the gas crisis of the 70s, the oil crisis, and the shortages of 70, 73, and then the big one of 79, the oil crisis. And that is when they tried to tell us that the Saudis could control the American economy. Whoops, sorry about that. And um, by stopping the flow of oil, and at that point, they, the government stepped in, which, of course, this was all a manipulated thing to begin with. And here are the images of the 70s of what happened. Now, most kids today will not remember this, but I happened to be alive then, and I remember when it happened. And it was a terrible thing. I mean, first off, the worst thing was changing the speed limit from 70 to 55 and so for years people had to drive at 55 miles an hour because oh we're running out of gas and it was just one of those things that they used to shock america and control and and so they dumbed down the cars they made them slower they made them they said more fuel efficient but the fact of the matter is that this was the biggest shock to happen to america People didn't know what to think or to do. And like this right here, this was another thing. Gas rationing coupons because of the Saudis. Can If you can believe that. But that was true. But they didn't, it never really came to that. Because all of a sudden, magically, we had oil again. And people don't realize that the oil wells, they get dry, but they fill back up. And why do they do that? Because it turns out the earth is a natural process to create oil. Like all the planets with hydrocarbons. Let's take a look. So here we have these old junkers of the 70s. Now, of course, they had the muscle cars, and which was just totally awesome cars. But then because of this gas thing, they turned them into junkers. Well, let's see what's happening now. Back then, how many cars do you think they had in the 70s? How many people was on the planet at that time? Well, now, with twice as many people in, what, the 70s? That would be um, 30, uh, 45 years ago. Let's take a look at what we got today. So we no longer have 55 mile an hour speed limits, but we have supercars. Well, imagine that. All of these fancy and mighty expensive, super fine rides that can do 200 plus miles an hour. And of course, some of them actually get pretty good gas mileage, but that's not the point. The point is they tried to make it where you couldn't drive fast to scare you and now they want you to drive as fast as you can because well oil's supposed to be a limited resource but to the ones that know no oil is not a limited resource it is the second most abundant 
thing on the earth. And what's the first? Water. Oil should be the same price as water. But there is a reason and a way that they made it to where it's not. And this video explains it. That it wasn't a fossil fuel. That it didn't come from fossil animals. <laughs> yeah. Is it just a mineral? Is it a mineral like any other mineral? Is that is that how it? This is Colonel Fletcher Prouty. What would you say? An interview done with him. What's the origin it, of? Uh, yeah, see. <clears throat> When they first found petroleum, uh, because they were beginning to make motors and, and, and wheels and railroad trains and all that sort of thing, and remember trains started in the beginning of the 19th century, then oil went from a, just a lubricant to a fuel and it made it valuable. And Rockefeller happened to be the smartest man in the business at the time, but he made a lot of most of his money or much of it off the transport of the petroleum as well as selling it. But one thing they realized was if you, because oil, uh, oil is, uh, putting a price on oil is like putting a price on a pail of water. You know, the, the, no, no initial cost is in the ground. And, and in those days, they were, some of it, almost what you'd call surface mining the oil. They didn't go down deep. So in order to get the price up, they hit on the idea that they would have to make it appear to be scarce. That, they, that boy, after we take the next few barrels out, we're probably going to have to close as well, you know, that kind of thing. But a very fortuitous event. In 1892, there was a convention in Geneva of, of scientists to determine what organic substances are. Well, the definition of organic is a substance with hydrogen, oxygen, and carbon. And so it's usually a living substance, a tree. You analyze a dead tree, hydrogen, carbon, and oxygen, and grass, and so on, living things. Animals, we are, hydrogen, oxygen, and carbon. So at this Geneva Convention, Rockefeller took advantage of sending some scientists over who said, oil, petroleum, is hydrogen, oxygen, and carbon. Therefore, it must be derived from the, uh, the spoiling, the rotting of formerly living matter. And uh, playing the game properly, when the this scientific convention was over, they defined oil as a, a residue from formerly living matter. Well, that makes it a fossil fuel. I don't know why they decided to use the word fossil, but it says you know, formerly living matter is fossil. Well, of course, today, and, and, and another thing we should know is that there has never been a fossil, of a, a, a real fossil, found below 16,000 feet. And you can't argue at 16,000 as a level line because someplace the ground sinks and so on. But 16 is what the scientists say, 16,000. We mine oil, or we, we drill for oil, at 30,000, 33,000, 28,000 every day of the week. So right there, we rule it out that it isn't fossil fuel. It's called fossil fuel for the minds of the public to feel that it is a, a, an asset that is running out, being depleted. We talk about depletion allowance, which is a lot of, you know. And actually, if you know the world's oil supply, you know that it is not going to run out for an awfully long time. It is the second most prevalent liquid on earth and, and we haven't begun to do well with all that background you see the people in charge of the petroleum business for perfectly reasonable business uh, things like any other man in a business wants to keep his price as high as he can get away with and the way to do is just say well as no more we, we, we the last barrel is going to cost a thousand dollars and then it's all done and, and they preach that stuff what bothers me is that that in geology books, it's in there. The geologists say it's a fossil fuel. They, they've somehow they've been bought. I, mean, you, I, <clears throat> I went to a four-year federal staff energy seminar run by the government of the United States during the so-called energy crisis. I was the participant that represented the railroad industry. The airline industry was there. Every AA administrative assistant of senators and congressmen was there. 
The CIA was there, the Defense Department was there, the State Department was there. Sometimes sitting right in front of me in the row would be Henry Kissinger with his friend, um, uh, the, the head of the uh, Department of Defense. Uh, that's too bad, I can't put the names with them. But anyway, people like that, top men in the government, sitting there listening to the Federal Staff Energy Seminar. Well, what this was doing is for four years, they were teaching a propaganda line to the leading people in this country, and therefore to the leading people in the world, when you include the Hissinger, uh, Schlesinger, Kissinger and Schlesinger, among others. And the object of it was, as Kissinger used in his own terms when it was time for him to speak, to create a world price for oil. In other words, not uh, 30 cents a gallon here and 90 cents a gallon there, but let's get a world price. That's their goal, and they're trying to do that for wheat and everything else. We don't realize what, it, what the controls are, whether it's oil or some of these other things. Almost everything today is being categorized at the highest price they can possibly make it go. And so calling petroleum a fossil fuel is the basis for th this system uh, with respect to petroleum. Nice. And, and I went, I don't know if the name Arthur Kantrowitz rings any bell. Arthur Kantrowitz <coughs> is the head of the Kantrowitz Labs set up by the uh, AFCO company uh, near Boston, uh, Scientific Laboratories and um, a great man in the scientific world. And Kantrowitz and I were sitting at a table at this uh, seminar once, and the table happened to be all young college grad PhD geologists. And so just to get a conversation started, I turned to Kantrowitz and I said, Arthur, what do you think about this foolishness of these speakers talking about fossil fuel? And uh, it was kind of put up. He started laughing. He said, you know, that gets me. He said, he says, I don't, he said, I don't have a geology degree, but he had a thousand other degrees. And he said, I don't understand. He said, you'd think that these heads, these other fellows at the table, we did it on purpose, start <laughs> listening, you know. And he asked, he said, uh, are you gentlemen? He says, you're here at the me. Are you gentlemen by any chance geologists? And one fellow, yes, I am. And the other, yeah. He said, well, why don't you tell me? He said, why, why is, why is, oh, you know, and he went on like that. We brought the house down because nobody could argue with Cantrowitz. He liked, he liked Einstein. People aren't going to, and he told him right there. He said, just drop it. But it's, it's in all the books and in all the papers. But it started from that strange meeting in 1892, a scientific convention. In G I have a big, thick scientific encyclopedia put out by the Devon Ostrand Company that's about, oh, 15 years old now, but it has the whole story of the conference. It doesn't have the Rockefeller part, but it has the whole story of how they straightened out organic chemicals and how it was all figured, and they've got petroleum right in there. Amazing. Amazing. So These aren't accidental things, you see. There's a dollar sign behind almost everything. Well, there you have it.